he screamed at a pro-Trump family in Swanky Restaurant, then followed them outside. The Democrat leadership is as yet recuperating from their notable 2016 election defeat. In a current occurrence, Senator Chuck Schumer lost his temper with a family eating at an upscale New York bistro, forcing them to flee. As per Fox News, patrons of the upscale Set Mezzo Eatery in New York's Upper East Side had their supper hindered when Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, DNY, began verbally hassling an all around associated supporter of President Trump. Cafes at the eatery revealed to Page Six that Schumer made a scene and was yelling at the female Trump supporter. Schumer supposedly took after the lady and her husband outside to proceed with his rage, shouting, How could you vote for Trump? He's a liar. Prominent Democrat Joseph A. Califano Jr. was enjoying a peaceful supper with his better half, Hillary, when Schumer moved toward the New York couple. Califano served in as the Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare under previous President Jimmy Carter. He likewise served in as the residential policy advisor to the previous president Lyndon B. Johnson. Hillary Califano is the daughter of William S. Paley, founder of CBS. Regardless of being married to a prominent Democrat, Hillary Califano upheld and voted in favor of President Trump in the 2016 presidential race. As indicated by a witness who was eating at Set Mezzo, Chuck Schumer recognized the couple from over the room and moved toward their table. They are a highly respected couple, and Schumer made a scene, yelling, she voted for Trump. The patron additionally expressed, the Califanos left the restaurant, but Schumer followed them outside. Chuck Schumer continued his tirade on the street, and was heard yelling, how could you vote for Trump? He's a liar. He kept repeating, he's a liar. Hillary Califano confirmed the story with Page Six and clarified that Senator Schumer was really rude. He's our senator, and I don't really like him. Yes, I voted for Trump. Schumer joined us outside and he told me Trump was a liar. I should have told him that Hillary Clinton was a liar, but I was so surprised I didn't say anything. Schumer denied that he lost his cool at the eatery. A representative for the congressperson clarified that, Schumer, and his wife ate at the cafe on Sunday, engaging in unremarkable conversation with patrons who approached their table. There were no heated exchanges with anyone. This is clearly rather than Hillary Califano's announcements. This is not the first run through Democrat leader Chuck Schumer let his feelings defeat him. Not long ago. Chuck Schumer broke down into tears while endeavoring to condemn President Trump's executive order temporarily blocking movement from seven Muslim greater part nations. While meeting with journalists, President Trump questioned Schumer's truthfulness, guaranteeing the representative was wearing fake tears and more likely than not utilized an acting coach. I know him very well, President Trump said of his fellow New York local. I don't see him as a crier. If he is, he is a different man. There's about a 5% chance that it was real, but I think they were fake tears. These occurrences demonstrate that a few leaders on the left are as yet unfit to acknowledge that the general population of the United States picked Donald Trump as their leader. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. HDCNA See what Mexico took away from America, President Trump is shocked. Mexico has been soaking up the United States for God knows how long. Between the immeasurably unreasonable NAFTA agreement to the encouragement of its residents to overstep U.S. government immigration laws by jumping the border, our citizens in this nation have been balanced an exceptionally costly bill. In its encouragement of its citizens to jump our border, they have even gone so far as to give them tips on the most proficient method to diversion our system, how to answer certain inquiries, and how to apply for social services in the wake of entering our nation keeping in mind the end goal to be protected and unfit to be deported upon capture. This kind of conduct with respect to the Mexican government, be that as it may, is only a glimpse of a larger problem.
Mexico had consented to finance modifying and protect endeavors in Houston, Texas after the pulverization of Hurricane Harvey. In view of the seismic tremor off its southwestern drift, the administration there has chosen to repeal its guarantee of help. Via Daily Caller In a wake of a massive earthquake that struck Mexico last week, Mexican officials decided to pulling aid to Hurricane Harvey victims in Texas, Reuters reported. The Mexican Foreign Ministry said in a statement Monday that after the earthquake, Mexico could no longer offer food, beds, generators, mobile kitchens, doctors, and other supplies that they initially planned to send. Given these circumstances, the Mexican government will channel all available logistical support to serve families and communities affected on national territory, the Mexican government said. At the time, the Mexican Consul General Francisco de la Torre Galindo said the collaboration between the U.S. and Mexico was needed. The offer for help and collaboration recognizes a reality, said Galindo. We live in the same neighborhood called North America. We cannot be distant neighbors, not anymore, not ever. Texas Governor Greg Abbott estimated that the damage sustained by Texas as a result of Hurricane Harvey ranges between $150 billion to $180 billion. President Donald Trump signed a $15 billion relief bill on Friday which included a short-term suspension of the debt ceiling, a bipartisan deal he made with Democratic leaders Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. This circumstance might be more about the way that ICE operators are working extra minutes in catches and extraditions of illegal aliens than it is about seismic tremor casualties. Actually, it's a decent bet that Mexico is doing this as a kind of in-reverse comeuppance to Americans for the election of Donald Trump. Whatever the reason, I've additionally been an advocate of, on the off chance that you shake hands on something or guarantee something you would do well to deliver. The long and shy of this story is that Mexico can't be trusted in even the empathetic department. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. HT The Daily Caller Top Democrat just announces resignation, liberals shocked. At the point when leftists find out about claims in the Catholic Church regarding molestation of kids by priests and clergy, they rally to the cry like flies to sugar. There isn't a man charged, according to the left, that isn't blameworthy before a trial has even been started and there isn't a receiver sufficiently enormous to pronounce to the world that this kind of conduct is not an irregularity, but rather the standard. Liberals are great at indicating shock and misusing any circumstance they regard will get them enough acknowledgement before the fake news industrial complex cameras. At the point when the mirror is turned about, be that as it may, you'll see an altogether different conduct. The crickets in the room will be louder than the terrified and overwhelming breathing as the liberals understand that another of their own has been outed. On account of the primary transparently gay leader of Seattle, Washington, leftists encouraged around this man, demonstrating that it was more about the philosophy than the shock. In the event that the belief system took a leftist account, at that point shock was not feasible. With the chairman, the assertions of sexual attack of young men when they were extremely youthful was more than the left was eager to remain behind. In this way, they remained back as he put forth his expression that he had done nothing incorrectly, but via the blaze. After months of battling accusers who said he had molested them as children, the mayor of Seattle is resigning from his position. Seattle Mayor Ed Murray announced Tuesday that he intended to resign just hours after the latest allegation was revealed from a fifth accuser. Murray is a Democrat and the first openly gay mayor of Seattle. While the allegations against me are not true, it is important that my personal issues do not affect the ability of our city government to conduct public business, he said in a statement. To the people of this special city and to my dedicated staff, he added, I am sorry for this painful situation. In July, the Seattle Times uncovered a CPS report about his alleged abuse that was previously believed to have been destroyed.
the Oregon Child Protective Services report concluded in 1985 that Murray had molested his foster son. In the professional judgment of this caseworker who has interviewed numerous children of all ages and of all levels of emotional disturbances in relation to sexual abuse, the report read, Jeff Sampson was sexually abused by, Edward Murray. Murray responded by denying he was guilty and pointed to the fact that he was never charged with the crime. The Multnomah County prosecutor, however, said at the time that they were unsure they could meet the high legal standard to prove the accusations, but did not say he was innocent. Despite what the leader says, the straightforward certainty is that he was chosen not on the grounds that he was an excellent or exceptional individual to fill such a position, yet more as a result of his sexual orientation. That is grievous. In any case, it is after all the basic foundation of personality governmental issues. There is likewise the toll that this goes up against the groups of the victims who are presently not just battling a man who accomplished something loathsome to their kids, yet additionally battling City Hall. Truly. Pray God for these families. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. HT The Blaze. Caught red-handed. Famous Democrat caught committing sex crime. Frank Skurlick, who is a Democratic New Orleans mayoral competitor, was supposedly discovered masturbating amid a Uber ride in California. The incident occurred not long ago. As indicated by the New York Post, a female Uber found Skurlick supposedly pleasuring himself while giving him a ride. He wasn't charged until August 31st because of inquiries identified with jurisdiction. The mayoral candidate, who is known for his trademark Make New Orleans Fun Again, is booked for arraignment in Los Angeles Criminal Court on October 16th. This is two days after the New Orleans mayoral primary. The driver told the specialists that she was driving, with Skirlick in the auto close Santa Monica when she heard the traveler making commotions in the back seat. In the wake of pulling over and opening her traveler entryway, she discovered Skurlick sitting with his genitals in his hands. Subsequent to finding the mayoral competitor in this compromising position, she rushed to a service station and called the police. Skurlick professedly fled the scene. At the point when the police arrived, the driver drove them to the hotel where she picked up Skurlick. Santa Claus Monica Chief Deputy City Attorney Terry White revealed to the Times Picayune, they went back to the hotel and were able to get a name. He proceeded, based on the name, they got a picture and put it in a photo lineup, and the driver identified him. On the off chance that Skurlick is discovered liable of the wrongdoing accusation of lewd conduct, he would be required to enlist as a sex wrongdoer in California. Obviously. This embarrassment could torpedo his future political aspirations. Skurlick has not said much in regards to the incident. As per the New York Post, he stated, I have no idea what I'm being charged with. This is isn't the first run through the hopeful experiences experienced issues with the law. In May, he was arrested at the Jefferson Davis statue in New Orleans at a protest the removal of the statue. He trusted that removing the statue would begin Civil War II. Right away, he was accused of hindering public passage, yet the charge was changed to attack. Afterward, a judge rejected his case. Skurlick is a local of New Orleans. He is the child of John Skurlick, the founder of Spacewalk Incorporated, which is an organization that manufactures bounce houses. This story is the most recent in a progression of sex embarrassments including Democratic government officials. Prior this month, Seattle Mayor Ed Murray was forced to resign after to being blamed for sexually abusing a youngster. It was the fifth allegation of this sort was leveled against the troubled chairman. Murray has denied the assertions. The most well-known embarrassment includes previous U.S. agent Anthony Weiner who supposedly sent improper pictures to underage females. He is right now confronting charges of transferring obscene material to a minor. He is the prospective ex of Hillary Clinton associate Huma Abden. 
government officials on the two sides of the aisle have had their offer of stories including sexual offense. Notwithstanding, it appears that of late, it has been Democratic government officials who have collected the most consideration. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. HTCNA This is huge. President Trump just opens a $971 million can of Wu Pass on Washington, budget proposes killing all funding for. President Trump has expressed his aims of cutting back the government by dispensing with pointless organizations and representatives and by trimming consumptions to more reasonable levels. What's more, in the event that you could envision, the liberals are shocked. It shows up the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the National Endowments for the Arts and Humanities are two organizations whose subsidizing is bound to be finished under the new budget proposal. Hollywood celebs have aroused to the reason in endeavors to mark Trump's proposed spending cuts as the worst-case scenario for arts groups. But here are the facts. However, Defunding the Corporation for Public Broadcasting is unlikely to cripple either PBS or NPR. NPR received less than 1% of its revenue from the CPB, and PBS less than 7%, according to data from 2014 reported in the Washington Post. Via the wrap, President Donald Trump made good on a longtime conservative goal in his first proposed budget Thursday morning targeting the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the National Endowments for the Arts and Humanities for complete elimination. Trump's budget would be out of the $445 million budget for the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a relatively small source of funding for programming and broadcast operations on public TV stations and NPR radio stations nationwide, per Washington Post. The budget would also eliminate budgets for both national endowments, which stood at $148 million each in 2016, as well as $230 million for the Institute of Museum and Library Services, which supports libraries and museums. Additional cuts would affect two tourist mainstays in Washington, D.C., the Smithsonian Institution and the National Gallery of Art. Combined the four arts organizations account for less than 0.02% of the U.S. government's $3.9 trillion budget. In 2016, the NE allocated $47 million to 50 states and five jurisdictions, funding that helped leverage $368 million from state governments to support arts organizations through more than 24,000 grants, according to the National Assembly of State Arts Agencies. In 2015, funding for the NE was almost one-third of what the U.S. budget allocated for military bans. Cutting financing for these offices is in all likelihood the initial phase in disposing of the loss over each level of the government, which is definitely required. The span of the government organization has become comparable with the national obligation and if America will moderate the plunge towards economic disaster, important penances should be made. Public broadcasting and the arts and humanities will simply need to collect help from private residents, which is not hard to do. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. HT The Wrap Former FBI Director James Comey just got humiliating news, now he needs to. James Comey figured out how to put his FBI vocation in full self-destruct mode in simply under a year. Since it is altogether said and done, he is taking in a startling truth. It creates the impression that Comey does not have anybody on his side, politically. The right abhorrences him for dismissing any arraignment of Hillary Clinton, regardless of overpowering confirmation. The left aversions him the same amount of for not examining President Trump how they would have preferred. Presently, as per Politico, the former FBI director is, quite literally, struggling just to get people to listen to him. Comey flew out to give a convocation address at Howard University. After he made that big appearance, 
he attempted to get his speech out, as understudies persistently yelled him down. The protesters remained in the back of the auditorium at Howard with their clenched hands raised to the sky and saying we shall not be moved, as Comey made that big appearance Friday. He scarcely got out a straightforward thank you to the college president before the verbal dissents began. Various chants were utilized as Comey stood unobtrusively at the front platform, sitting tight for the group to settle down. Chants of no justice, no peace could be heard all through the occasion, alongside, get out Jim Comey, you're not our homie. Comey's endeavors to quiet the crowd just brought about further pestering. He stated, I hope you'll stay to listen to what I have to say, and I just listened to you for five minutes. As you can envision, the endeavor fizzled, and an administrator stepped up to attempt and calm the situation. The administrator was additionally yelled down, and surrendered attempting to calm the unstable situation. The crowd stayed uncooperative. Legitimately. You would believe that the school would accomplish a comment the general population who were causing the ruckus from the occasion. Rather, there was no endeavor to expel the demonstrators. After at long last giving in, Comey started to talk, paying little heed to the protesters yelling out of sight. A lion's share of the general population there needed to hear Comey talk, in his eyes, yet the ones who didn't strive to disturb the event. The left trusts that Comey sold out them by not seeking after their outlandish cases concerning President Trump and Russia. In the meantime, they neglect to recognize the proof that he drafted a letter clearing Hillary Clinton of any wrongdoing in her server embarrassment before talking her. Comey figured out how to get his speech out, regardless of the possibility that it was suffocated around chance of white supremacy is not a bait. He has planned to give a progression of lectures at Howard amid the 2017-2018 school year. The chances are this, things are not going to get considerably less demanding for the previous FBI director. By the day's end, he has nobody to fault yet himself. His unadulterated untrustworthiness has raised eyebrows on both the left and the right. He has, as is commonly said, made his bed, and now he gets to lay in it. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. HDCNA See who's just been indicted for obstruction of justice, FBI is in a blind panic. The FBI has had a troublesome time of it for a while. That is the kind of thing that happens when one gets included with corrupt people. For example, the Clintons and Mr. Obama. Obviously, it's the FBI's business to get involved with corrupt individuals, yet that ought to be from a place of enforcing the law, not one of giving things a chance to slide to profit political interests. To add to the issues the office is managing because of Mr. Comey's faulty activities, it has now been uncovered that another wrongdoing seems to have been concealed. The Daily Caller is announcing that an FBI agent has been charged with obstruction of justice and making false statements in a shooting incident and that he faces up to 25 years in prison if convicted on all counts. An FBI agent was indicted Wednesday on allegations of lying to cover up his role in the shooting of militia leader Robert Lavoy Finicum in Oregon last year. Agent W. Joseph Asterita, a 40-year-old hostage rescue team member, allegedly lied about firing twice on Finnicum, who was shot to death in the course of an attempted arrest related to the militia's occupation of the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge in January 2016, reported the Oregonian. While Asterita's shots missed, two state police officers shot and killed Finnicum just moments later, possibly triggered by Asterita opening fire first. Sadly, We've been down this street before with an individual from the hostage rescue team shooting a civilian personnel. Finnicum is seen getting out of the truck and walking through the snow with his hands up in surrender. He then makes a move to reach into his jacket, where the FBI said he was carrying a gun. At that point, one of the authorities walks up out of the woods and shoots Finnicum dead from behind. The state police officers were deemed justified in shooting Finnicum a verdict which remains unchanged by Asterita's indictment, 
according to Oregon U.S. Attorney Billy J. Williams. Assuming, surely, Mr. Finnecombe was getting ready to start shooting at the police they were totally legitimized in shooting him while safeguarding themselves. Then again, FBI specialist Asterica's prosecution unmistakably demonstrates that he supported which he felt it important to conceal. What individuals, for example, Asterita and Comey neglect to comprehend is that the notoriety of the many fine operators who serve respectably in the FBI is discolored when they take part in faulty or illicit acts. In that sense, the individuals who present with unique excellence are victims of the kind of conduct. It might be that the FBI has a touch of the swamp in it that necessities draining. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. HT The Daily Caller Shocking! FBI makes illegal move against President Trump, you'll be furious. Supporters of President Donald Trump have since a long time ago presumed that he faces profound resistance in Washington, D.C. One of the greatest wellsprings of resistance is the deep state, which is driven by the FBI. This week, for the third time in succession, the FBI has declined to hand over subpoenaed archives relating to the mostly debunked Trump dossier. So far, both the FBI and the Justice Department have been stating no to the House Intelligence Committee, as indicated by the Gateway Pundit. This is unlawful, as well as it brings up issues about the much vaunted independence of the FBI. So far this week, the best law enforcement agency in the country has gotten a bruised eye. On Monday, previous Trump campaign manager, Paul Manafort, had his telephone lines tapped by the FBI. Some of these taped discussions could have included President Trump. Up until now, it gives the idea that the active Obama administration utilized a mystery court request to have Manafort kept an eye on. One of the main thrusts behind the greater part of this deep state interest is the now generally disparaged Trump dossier that purportedly suggests or demonstrates that President Trump is being blackmailed by Russian intelligence services. This dossier was assembled by previous MI6 operator Christopher Steele. Steele now works with opposition research association Fusion GPS. Fusion GPS likewise has connections to the Comrade Autocracy in Venezuela and to the Russian attorney who apparently set a trap for Donald Trump Jr. amid a suspicious-looking meeting a year ago. As indicated by the Washington Examiner, House Committee Chairman Devin Nunes, RCA, originally set a September 1 deadline for production of the dossier documents. The FBI did not comply. Nunes then extended the deadline to September 14. The FBI did not comply. Then, Nunes extended the deadline again, to September 22. Now, again, the FBI has not complied. While a significant part of the Trump dossier is bizarre, it has impacted public policy. For example, before being fired, FBI Director James Comey referred to the dossier in a few briefings. Besides, now that Robert Mueller is examining some of President Trump's decisions, counting the terminating of Comey, the exceedingly lustful dossier is appreciating a moment life. Unless the full substance of this dossier is swung over to the House Intelligence Committee, at that point one is just left with the feeling that the FBI is attempting, frantically, to utilize this dossier as some sort of battering ram against the Trump White House. This story features not just the guileful energy of groups like Fusion GPS, yet additionally the way that in the present Washington, transparency is only a decent word that amounts to nothing. On the off chance that the Trump dossier is truly so touchy, at that point why keep it avoided the light of day? The Democrats have made a fiend's deal with the deep state out of their sheer contempt of Donald Trump. In the event that the deep state some way or another wins this war, at that point anticipate that the Democrats will endure under an engaged inside administration. The deep state needs to keep itself in power, and right now Donald Trump is a risk to that authority. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. HTCNA